for today's video, we will be ranking the most popular team compositions for Dispatch's Spiral Abyss, specifically for Floor 12, and we're even going to narrow it down specifically for each chamber and how well the team fares against the enemy or enemy combinations in their field. Please do keep in mind, the teams I'll be highlighting in this guide will most likely be kept at C0 to C2 for 5 stars and unlock constellations for 4 star characters since majority of the players are either low spenders or F2P. However, I will mention whether having the extra constellation will affect the team rating significantly. Before we get started, it is important to understand role definition since I will be referring to these terms throughout this tier list. Core characters are essential to the team comp and a key part of what makes it work. On-field characters spend the most time attacking on-field in each rotation. Sustain keeps the team alive by providing healing or shields. Support increases the team's overall damage output through various means. Battery generates a large amount of energy particles for the key damage dealers and flex are flexible characters that can be used for different roles based on what you need. So for example, if we break down a Mona Geo team comp, we'll know that Ito's role is on field since he deals the most damage and stays on the field the longest. Goro is the core of the team and his buff that he gives is irreplaceable. Albedo functions as a support battery while Zhongli sustains the team with his tough shield. Of course, we can change some of the characters in this team. For example, we can switch Ito with Noel or Albedo with Raiden for battery. Please take this into account when I'm highlighting the teams used for this guide as many of the teams I'll be mentioning can have one or two characters replaced by another. Now that we understand the concept of team comps, we can move on to the tier list. To create this tier list and rate the teams for this abyss, I'll be taking into consideration the following. The time taken for the team to clear their chamber, amount of tries it took to get the best time, and lastly, how effective the team's ability affect the abyss mobs to clear the floor more efficiently. These variables are affected by gacha and I'll be mentioning this occasionally throughout the video. With all that out of the way, let's look at our very first team comp, Hyperbloom. The Hyperbloom team I used consisted of Raiden, Yellen, Nahida, and Yao Yao. This team performed amazingly well against the mechanical mobs since this team paralyzes them and is essentially Asimon's kryptonite in Chamber 3. While wielding characters are essential in Chamber 2 first half, therefore having Yellen made the Aegean Blight Drake a pipsqueak. Hyper Bloom also performed well against the second half but not as amazing due to the lack of crowd control. Since majority of the opponents on the second half is spread out, you are forced to edge bait, making you lose precious seconds. Overall, Hyper Bloom takes a crown for dispatch since the characters in this team comp is very versatile. For example, Yao Yao can be replaced by Kokomi or Kuki for sustain, while Raiden can be swapped with Fischl, Yai Miko, or Sino for on field. Nahida's Tri Karma ability is actually an integral core of this team, but if you have sufficient DPS to replace her with Alhaitam or even Sino, then it shouldn't hurt the power level of this team comp. Aggravate performs similar to Hyper Bloom and can easily demolish each half of Floor 12. A strong Aggravate team comp consists of two Electro characters, a Dendro enabler like Nahida, and a Flex support. Strong Electro Appliers like Yamiko, Kutching, and Fischl allows you to constantly proc aggravate reactions which works well against enemies in Chamber 1 and 3 of the first half while having Fischl deal with the A and Black Drake for Chamber 2. Furthermore, you can add Kasua as your flex character for the crowd control unit for the second half of Floor 12 while Cookie sustains your team. Bloom and Burgeon teams cleared majority of the second half within 1 minute and sometimes even less. If you were fortunate to have Nilo in your Bloom team, those bountiful cores which explode immediately took care of the multiple mobs while Burgeon did similarly with its exploding Dendro cores. Overall, Nilo Bloom gets a special S plus rating for the second half chambers while Burgeon comes close with A. Now that the Dendro team comps are out of the way, let's take a look at non-Dendro driven team comps beginning with the most popular elemental combinations, to hyper carry teams, and finally mono team comps. Starting with Last Patch's most popular team, Tip of the Iceberg aka Ayaka Premium Team, Ayaka and Co make quick work of the multiple mobs in Chamber 1 and the rest of the second half. Since all the enemies were able to be frozen, including the Consecrated Beast, Ayaka's burst destroyed all of them. However, the Aeon Blight Drake, Asimon, and the Triple Mago Kenki posed a slight problem due to the elemental incompatibility and the fact that the Triple Mago Kenki Onslaught had Ayaka running for her life. Shao Double G I want most popular use unit back in version 2 and below has lost its significance due to the high resistance of the consecrated beast and high animation time of the single boss monsters. Provided you have Faruzen to significantly increase Xiao's damage, then there's potential but unfortunately Zhongli's shield can't take the damage for Xiao forever giving it a lower overall rating throughout. 
Yuijun had an excellent single target damage output, but majority of the enemies were multiple target and she only did well against the Alien Blind Drake. Even Fireworks Yemia, composed of Beido, Fischl, and Zhongli, had a lot of problems in the second half mobs, thus Yuijun overall gets a lower rating throughout. Ganyu, the Queen of Cryo, finally lost her edge in this patch. Her ultimate DPS team Melshot Ganyu with Zhangling as the core couldn't cope well due to the constant interruption of enemies. Even if we saw Kazuha with Zhongli for increased sustain, the high mobility and agility of the Consecrated Beast gave constant trouble with Ganyu's aim mechanics. Alongside, Ganyu's famous Morgana team completely lacked the DPS needed for her run. She did well against the small mobs, but as soon as she was up against the bosses with high resistance like the Consecrated Beast and the Triple Mago Kenki, it was all over for her. Overvape has one of the best, if not the best, single target damage out of all the teams listed. I personally run a Huda Overvape Suicide Comp composed of an amazing on field Hu Tao, two S tier support Sing Chun Yellen, and the Raiden Core. This team comp is my go to pre Dendro era, however, this team requires a lot of skill and health management. Thus, it gets a high overall rating of A+. Again, this team is single target focused but can work well provided you take steps to draw enemies together through edge baiting and careful reposition. Finally, we have Child International and Raiden National. With a core composing of best supports such as Zingcho, Zhangling, Bennett, and Kazuha, this national and international team have been the emergency go-ahead team if other team fails. And for this patch, this team comes once again lives up to its name. In my opinion, Raiden National have a slight edge because of the energy she provides for the team, allowing you to constantly use burst after burst. On a side note, Child International struggles to clear Asman due to Electro while Raiden National struggles to clear Iron Blade Drake because of its flying mechanics. However, Lianlin substituting Singcho and this team fixes this ordeal. Other than that, both teams have no problem clearing all these enemies in second half with these. Next. We'll quickly take a look at three hyper carry teams that's been dominating the past abyss for a while. We have a Huta hyper carry, Raiden hyper carry, and Eula hyper carry. During my testing and piloting my client's abyss, I found that Raiden hyper carry flourished in the first half while Huta hyper carry flourished in the second. This is again due to the fact that the mobs in the first have been susceptible to electric attacks, while Huta's insane DPS is complemented by Kazuha to provide CC. So essentially, you get the best of both worlds. Eula struggled on the other hand as she is unable to complete stacks on her lifeful sword especially when facing the Consecrated Beast. Her rotations to also achieve maximum damage take a very long time, hence her rating for this abyss is abysmally low. Moving on to our Mono Team Comps, I listed Mono Geo, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro as they are the more popular Mono Comps often used. These comps are well complemented by Kazuha to increase DPS and provide CC. Mono Pyro, similar to Hu Tao, Hyper Carry is excellent on the second half, while Zhangling's AoE burst complements Kazuha's crowd control. Mono Cryo performed quite average in Chambers 1, first half, and Chamber 2 and 3, second half, since the enemies can occasionally escape Ayaka's burst because they are not frozen. However, the Aeon Blight Drake and the Tree Mago Genki didn't stand a chance for the burst onslaught, while the Yonis Cryo Shield, providing 200% uh, damage cryo absorption provides S tier sustainability against the three Genkis. The ever popular Mono Geo, driven by Ito and Goro, performed well against all of the chambers. A well invested Mono Geo has AoE damage from Ito and Albedo's burst, about character guard is the in Blood Drake, and great sustainability with Zhongli and Geo Resonance. And that concludes my Abyss team tier list for version 3.6. Just to add a few afterward for this guide, I am aware there are new support characters like Frozen Mika that really buffs animal and physical DPS respectively, and thus new team comps that performs better than previous well known team comps like how Shao Double Geo is now overshadowed by a team made of Shao, Frozen, Zhangli, and Bennett. However, I took into consideration that OG team comps are still being used more often than the newer team comps. Therefore, my future tier list will probably replace the OG team comps as more players build the new characters. Do you note that with high enough investment, many of the teams I mentioned in this guide that receive a lower rating can clear floor 12. However, these ratings are made with mid to high investments in mind and from my experience in using them in the app. Additionally, I also didn't include teams that I haven't built well enough for me to give a fair evaluation. But I will give them a separate honorable mention, but keep in mind that this hasn't been tested personally by me in the Abyss. Kokomi Tazer Comp 
a team composed of Kogami, Sucrose, Fischl, and Beido. We'll do pretty well against multiple enemies and mechanical type enemies, probably will struggle on the Asimen floor due to lack of Dendro. Burning Ganyu. Zhangling in the Melt Ganyu camp gets replaced by Nahida to apply burning effect and is melted by Ganyu. I believe should perform similar to Melt Ganyu. Ayato National. Typical national team comp where Ayato is the driver, should provide similar results to Child International but is easier to use and have slightly less DPS. There are plenty of team combinations out there that could do the job since Abyss content is clearable with enough character investments. However, the purpose of this guide is to give you an idea of which teams you have available and built to use and match on each chamber. For example, since we know that Hyper Bloom are exceptional in the first half, I can use a Monocryo team on the second half since the clear time of Hyper Bloom will give me enough time to clear the second half with a minute and 45 seconds on average. Please don't be offended if I personally gave your favorite team a lower rating, maybe the next Abyss update will favor them better. Use this guide to your advantage when forming your teams. And lastly, if you enjoyed this type of content, please hit the like and subscribe button or join and follow any of my socials and I'll see you on the next one.